This is not just a greeting, but it signifies that this beautiful day will bring smile on your face and happiness in your life. So I wish each one of you a very lovely and beautiful day and welcome you all to IIEBM's Domain Expert Series of our induction program. And I am Professor Neeraj Kumar Sathone from Placement Team, your host for the session. This session will be of 1 hour 15 minutes where 60 minutes will be for knowledge sharing and last 15 minutes for the question and answer. You can type your questions in the chat box which will be addressed at the end of the session. It's not about ideas but about the making ideas happen and who else can explain it better than our today's guest Dr. Sunil sir. He is talking on poultry industry in India and supply chain in poultry. Uh, sir have completed MVSC Poultry Science from Maharashtra Animal and Fishery Science University. Then he have joined Venkateshwara Hatcheries Private Limited as a manager sales. Then Vetoquinal India Animal Health Private Limited as business manager in poultry. And since last 11 years, sir is working with Venkis India Limited as a deputy general manager. He have top skills of product development, marketing strategy and poultry. Now over to you, sir. Please continue. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Myself, as the Professor Neeraj introduced me, Dr. Sunil Nadgauda. I welcome you all for this talk on supply chain management in poultry. But before that, I would like to give my short or brief info about uh, myself. I am a postgraduate as told by Professor Neeraj in poultry science from Bombay Veterinary College. I post graduation, I completed my post graduation in 1997. And since then, I am working with Venkateshwara Hatcheries as a poultry nutritionist. For a very short period of four to five months, I worked with Veterinary India Private Limited. And right now my job profile is to provide the feed formulations to the commercial broilers, layers and breeders so that they can give better kind of production in terms of chicken and eggs. So with this brief intro, I would like to start today's session. Today, this topic for discussion is supply chain in poultry. Basically, this is also a very new topic for me also, as we are dealing with poultry since last 25 years, but we never thought of this kind of uh, subject to be discussed. So first of all, I am very much thankful to Neeraj for providing me this opportunity to talk on this different kind of subject, which is really interesting. I hope it will be equally interesting for you people also to learn something new out of your regular domain. So friends, the poultry in world for meat and egg is growing at the fastest rate among all the meat categories because of increasing concerns for health, safety, then convenience, then variety and competitiveness. But issues related to poultry meat supply chain include perishability of the product. This is one of the most important issue, then environmental regulations and globalizations. You might have heard about the import of the leg pieces from the chicken, uh, from America to India and the discussion thereafter. In today's talk, we are going to discuss the supply chain specific to Indian poultry industry. The poultry industry in India is a success story which has gradually transformed from unorganized backyard farming into large scale organized farming. However, the supply chain are still characterized by inefficacy, inefficiencies diseconomics of the sale and lack of investment and inadequate structure. So these are the peculiar characteristics which are related to poultry supply chain. Before going into presentation, I would like to give some information related to Indian economy. As you all know that it is $2.7 trillion economy, which is fastest growing at more than 7% rate. India is having 1.3 billion population, very attractive markets are in India and mostly this population of 1.3 billion is characterized by 
presence of more than 64% people which are between 15 to 60 years of age and we are agriculture country so majority of our economy is based on agriculture this economy is characterized by middle income developing market economy and it is the world's sixth largest economy by nominal gdp and third largest by purchasing power parity according to the international monetary fund on per capita income basis india ranked 145th by the nominal gdp and as you all aware that india's middle class population may soon be larger than us population and india will surpass us in 59 becoming the second largest economy in the world and this will be the second country after china to surpass us economy in terms of nominal gdp the long term growth prospectives of indian economy remains positive due to its young population and corresponding low dependency ratio healthy savings and investment rates increasing globalization in india and integration into global economy so these are the peculiar characteristics of indian economy then this gdp almost 54% gdp comes from service sector last to be uh, before two years two years back but now in 2025 we are almost planning 60% of gdp will come from service sector 20% from industry and agriculture will be contributing to approximately 20% of the gdp then as i told you india's middle class population is increasing and so that our gdp contribution is increasing at the same time it will surpass the economy of us also so these are the strong points about indian economy coming to food and poultry production in india almost groceries are more than 30 billion us dollar and meat sector is 30 billion 300 billion groceries meat sector is 30 billion and 70% of indians are non vegetarians which is a very big contribution to the meat and poultry sector and when you compare meat and poultry production in india the species wise contribution maximum contribution is coming from poultry which is 36% then buffalo meat 22% goat meat 18% pig meat 9% sheep and 8% and 6% contribution is coming from other species like ducks geese quails etc so this is about the contribution of different meat sectors in india india is the third largest egg producer after china and usa and fourth largest chicken producer in the world after china brazil and usa and our per capita consumption of egg is 72 eggs and 4.5 kg broiler chicken meat per capita which has increased from 30 eggs and 400 grams of chicken in the last decade respectively uh, but national advisory committee has recommended almost 180 eggs per person per year and 11 kg of chicken per person per year so from this you can imagine there are indian poultry market is laden with the opportunities for all sectors before going i will just give you idea because broilers or layers they does not only contribute to the poultry but the poultry is a broad term which can be defined as domestic fowls including chicken turkey geese ducks which are raised for the purpose of meat production and egg production so these are the different species which are enlisted here which can comes under poultry and these are the modern breeds of chicken in india commercial broilers you can say cop 430 this is the breed which has been developed by venkis india limited and then other breeds also ross then hubbard sunbro lowman and broiler breeders i will give you the details what broiler breeder means what commercial broiler means and commercial layer means and this is the bb 300 commercial layer bird which lays eggs table eggs 
and these are the these BV three hundred belongs to Venkateshwara head series, whereas other breeds are different companies. They are having Bohans, Highline, and Lowman, and these are the desi breeds which are developed by our own country like kadaknath which is you might have heard about the black meat so this kadaknath is a black meat bird then sonali and these both can be used for uh, egg purpose and meat purpose also and there are so many other breeds also like kaveri and etc so this is about the poultry what poultry means and coming to india's poultry production we are almost producing 10 million of broilers per day and 250 million of eggs per day so this is the productivity of indian poultry industry then this poultry industry is growing at a rate of 8 to 10 percent per annum in case of broiler chicken and 4 to 6 percent in case of layers which are producing the table eggs so Growth rate wise, this is also maintaining a healthy growth rate every year. Then coming to our today's main topic, supply chains which are operating in poultry industry. So all these different peoples, they are involved in the supply chain in poultry. So first one is raw material producers and suppliers for which are used for which raw material is used for feed production in poultry. Then feed suppliers, they price the raw material and then produce the feed and supply it commercially or they can use it for their own purpose also. Then chick suppliers, like day old chicks, one day old chicks of broiler breeder, commercial broilers, layers, they are sold in the market. So the chick suppliers, then litter material suppliers, lot of bedding material is required in case of producing the broiler chickens. So these litter material suppliers are there, then poultry farmers which are having their own farms or contractual farm, they might have entered in contract with some company. I will give the details in subsequent slides. Then live bird suppliers, after produ pre pre producing the birds or broilers, they are sold in the market to the traders or direct supply to the consumers or hotels that, that also comes under this. Again, there are chicken and meat processing plants which collect the broilers, eggs, they process it and after processing, they sell it into the market. Then there are vaccine, medicine and feed supplements, suppliers and producers also in this chain and feed meals, hatchery, rendering plant, processing plant, equipment manufacturing, but lot of equipments are required for farming or hatchery or feed mill and these manufacturers also come under this category and raw and processed meat suppliers to the customers. So these are the different persons which are involved in poultry supply chain in poultry. A very big, big and vast supply chain is operating in poultry. I will go into the details. As you all know that I told you that we are an agriculture country and poultry is basically dependent upon the agriculture for raw material or feed ingredients which are in the form of maize, then jawar, then soya bean meal, de oil, then lot of other materials like de oil, rice bran, then sorghum, bajra, they comes under uh, these feed ingredients for production of poultry feed and these raw materials when the agriculture farmer is producing then they are selling it to the large feed mills to the middlemen and then these middlemen will sell to the small feed millers and that mostly these large feed millers they purchasing directly from the customer they are doing the e weeding and all these kind of channels they are utilizing and then these raw materials are supplied to particular feed mill or small feed mill and then they go for the feed production so this is the base because feed is almost constituting say more than 75% cost of the poultry production. So feed is very important in this scenario and that's why this in this mainly the agriculture producing farmers, large feed millers, government agencies and the intermediate persons they are involved for this kind of supply chain and most most of the time this can be considered as a backward integration. So many of the feed millers they are having a contract or tie up with the agriculture producing farmer for the supply of maize and other raw materials to their feed mill for feed production. Then what is the current scenario of this feed, uh, supply chain? So 
there are less or moderate availability of this uh, alternative ingredients is there because maize and maize only constitutes more than 50% of the requirement but this is many of the times it is not available because of some drought conditions poor feed production uh, poor crop production and all that so that's why many of the times we need to find out the alternative sources but these alternative sources are not much and that's why they are causing problems sometimes right now what we are facing a problem related to availability of maize and prices are skyrocketing and then we are deficient in production of grains because because of many times the problems related to agriculture farming are causing problems to the availability of these raw material then poor storage conditions before the supply because if it is not properly supplied then these there are chances that these raw materials or feed ingredients will develop fungus and will cause problems related to toxicity in the poultry and also there is lot of variation in the different uh, sources or quality of the raw material based on the source because it doesn't come from a single source it comes from many of the source they are clubbed together and then they are supplied to the end user that is the feed meal or the poultry farmer so there are lot of variations in the quality there but what we can do in this case we can have a good and alternative feed ingredient sources which are time tested then backward integration as i told you we can do the backward integration most of the time so that there we can create awareness and give assurity to the contract farmers related to purchase of his goods at a reasonable price and we need to have create more number of uh, storage proper storage con storages like for the grains and the finished products also and if it is a one supply and one one source then the variability in the quality can be controlled at a greater level so this is the what i was talking related to poor storage is leading to damaging of the grains and these kind of grains are giving problems when we are we use it in poultry production so you can say if it is from one single source then your quality will be good and uh, you will have better production also so reliable source of raw materials preferably single source and proper storage will help to avoid the future problems then i will give you idea why i am showing maize and i am giving more in, in, emphasis on related to maize or it can called as corn also because india maize is widely available as a low cost energy source again it is easily digestible for the birds and highly palatable also it constitutes more than 50% of the feed and growth of the poultry industry has been facilitated by concomitant surge in domestic maize production also so as the maize production is increasing the same time the poultry industry can grow much better with the growth of the maize so between year 2000 and 2010 the domestic poultry sector in india grew by almost 140% whereas maize grain production increased by 93% and growth in poultry industry in india is fueling investment in maize cultivation and processing so that way it is also giving stimulation to the maize cultivation in india then coming to the chick supply chain these are the day old chicks of the broilers commercial broilers commercial layers and broiler breeders and this is the detail of it so companies they are having pure lines then great grandparent stock then grandparent stock then parent stock then layer parent stock and layer parent stock chicks broiler this is layer this is then commercial which produce the table eggs then these chicks go from here layer parent who is the person who is having layer parent stock can sell the chicks directly to the customers or they can sell the eggs for hatching the chicks in the hatchery and then they come to the commercial layer chicks and same is the case with the broilers also because from broiler parent stock chicks are sold in the market or they can be kept in the machines for hatching purpose and after hatching they can be sold in the market so this this is the main supply supply chain but pure line the pure line companies are not many 
there is only one company venkis or venkateshwara hatcheries which is having pure lines for broilers and layers and great grandparents they are having grandparents and all that but you will find lot of companies which are having parent stocks which are having broiler parent stock layer parent stock so this number is definitely more but number of these customers is more and these are actually the persons which are producing the table eggs and chicken for human consumption so this supply chain starts from the company and it is more or less organized well and having distribution channels and monitored very well then from here these were the chicks we are produced from this layer parent stocks and broiler parent stocks so then they come to for uh, they are sold to the open customers or the farmers and they can produce the table eggs which are used for human consumption and same is the case with the day old broiler chicks also they will be sold to the open customers or they can be used for their own use also which are used for chicken and meat production so what is the current situation chick supply chain is somewhat well organized for transport of day old chicks but older hatchery equipments available with many of the companies and for uh, hatching purpose and transportation of chicks in ordinary vehicles is time consuming and also it is affecting the performance of the chicks when they are given to the customer and most of the hatcheries are located away from the production area so we can implement the modern technology for hatching and for transportation like cool vans with tracking devices so that we can have better performance at the farm level and also we can have decentralization of the operations which have been initiated by many of the companies right now under current situation they are start having decentralization of their operations then currently this this what the pictures i am showing it is called as a hatchery or a incubator so here this machine particularly is holding the eggs for incubation so incubation is almost 21 days it takes from a egg chicks to hatch from the egg so 21 days are required so these machines are used which are temperature and humidity control controlled machines are there everything works automatically so these hatcheries are producing the chicks and then the chicks comes out of the eggs on their own and then they are separated from the cell debris and they are transported to the farm so these are the hatchery practices this kind of hatchery they can many operations are there but these are the pictures from inside the hatchery like uh, candling is there vaccinations they are doing sometimes grading sometimes many of the things they are carried out at the hatchery but what is the expected future now in many of the western countries they have started to hatch the eggs in the farm itself so that they can start better they will get the feed water required for their growth and at the farm itself immediately after the hatching we say that we should not delay the time between the chicks coming out of the egg and having the first feed so there should be minimum delay so this is the this practice is followed to avoid that delay and here also in ovo nutrition also can be possible where they are injecting some of the nutrients along with vitamins and minerals inside the incubating egg inside the machine only at the age of 17 or 18 days of incubation so that the development starts in the egg itself and they will give you the fantastic product um, performance at the farm level so these are the some different pictures of eggs which are hatched at the farm itself where they are going to spend their 40 45 days of the life they are hatched there only so they need not have to do any transportation so that the transportation trace is avoided and time is also avoided so basically there are two categories of poultry farming in india one is commercial poultry farming which is done on large scale and one is backyard poultry farming where the 100 250 or something odd like birds are kept in the nearby the house 
बैक साइड ऑफ द हाउस एंड दे आर यूज फॉर ओनली फॉर द कंजम्पन ऑफ द फैमिली दे आर यूज बट नाउ दिस बैक एंड पोल्ट्री फार्मिंग इज अगेन ऑल्सो स्लोली स्लोली इंक्रीजिंग एंड दिस कमर्शियल पोल्ट्री फार्मिंग इन है two aspects i am talking about the commercial poultry farming in india where they are having their own farms own farm means they the farm they are purchasing the chicks at their own feed at their own they are producing the chicken or producing the eggs and selling the eggs and chicken in the market at their own so this farmer comes under the own farming or open farming whereas this model which is called as integration or contract broiler farming in this case the companies which are ha- having their own breeder stock own feed mill they are doing contract with the customers or farmers who are having their own shed and then they are supplying the chicks feed medicine vaccine and technical know how to these contract farmers then they will grow the birds for the company and they they will give it back to the company and in turn these contract farmers they are getting growing charges based on the performance of the bird at their farm so this is contract farming and more than 80% of the broiler farming in india is done under this category contract broiler farming so this contract broiler farming also having a very big chain if i, I will show you you after some uh, two three slides and this kind of housing is used utilized this is a free range where the birds are kept at uh, in the open space here the birds are kept in the open space limited open space and some covered space also which is called a semi intensive type and this is the intensive type where are the birds are kept in the shed they are, they are not um, uh, free to roam here and there but they are kept inside the shed or in side the cages for the egg producing birds and this is in china in our country this farming is more and this free range mainly comes under the organic poultry farming but this is most popular intensive type we where the birds are kept in the cages and the uh, open sheds so these are the photographs of uh, commercial poultry farming here this is a environmentally controlled poultry farm where temperature humidity ventilation everything is controlled and provided as per the requirement of the bird for better growth and production and here this this is a open shed where all the two sides are open and uh, changes in the outside or ambient temperature environment can affect the birds inside the shed also so but most majority of the farming in our country is with this open type of farms in case of broilers and right now most of the new investment in poultry is coming in this environmentally controlled houses for uh, better production and uh, productivity and this is for the commercial egg layers with the birds which are producing the table eggs this kind of system is used this is a cages system birds are kept in the cages they are provided with the feed ad libitum feed and ad libitum water for egg production then eggs are collected and then sold in the market so this is about the layers what then coming to the integration model which is more than 80% in our country this contract broiler farming you can call it or integration so this is a person who is at the center of the supply chain this is the integrator he is having parent breeder stock he is having his own hatchery hatch and hatching eggs produced from this parent flock then these hatching eggs are put in the hatchery and then what he does he then they put these uh, commercial chicks they hold chicks at the farms which are with in contract with him then the contract farmer they will grow it for more than 40 days and then they will sell it back to this integrator and what this integrator is again doing he is purchasing the raw material for required for feed production like uh, maize then soya bean meal extraction then many of the medicines which are required like toxin binders acidifiers vitamins minerals and then he is producing the feed meal at his own farm 
at own feed mill and then this feed is utilized for the feeding the birds which are with the contract farms and from this contract farm the ready bird they are then collected this person after 35 to 40 days these birds become ready for the sale and then these are sold to the traders which are coming to the farm lifting the birds and going back to the metro cities and supplying to the small chicken shafts in the in the city to sell to the customers likewise this chain works and many times these integrators they are having their own slaughter house or own processing plant chicken processing plant they process the chicken to different categories like pieces or whole chicken or drumsticks or wings likewise they are processing it and then they are supplying it to the outlets in the malls to the hotels or to the qsrs like mcdonalds and kfc and from there the consumer can take it or this ready birds can be sold or from this processing plant and to consumer through the digital marketing but right now this portion is very less i am going to explain you in the coming slides then this is another supply chain there are so many supply chains i mentioned right in the start at the start of the presentation only so these are the day old chicks which are uh, of layer then this is from company like venkis they are taken by the farmers they grow it for 15 weeks or uh, four months and after four five months these are purchased by these producer farms these are purchasing these pullets from these farms so here company then here is one farmer which is growing for other and he is the producer for ek producer who is purchasing from this farmer so these are the three main persons involved in this chain and this farm has to in procure all the things feed medicine vaccine everything and then only he can produce these birds and then sell it to the customer for production of table eggs so this is a layer pullet growing section what are the opportunities in this particular sector so industrial poultry sector is well developed and organized also because many of the companies are there they have all ultra modern, modern facilities they have implemented for their uh, smooth operations and uh, this integration model which we discussed discussed here this is a complete package this can give you the complete idea about the poultry and gives you the complete business package which one can start easily without any hassles and what are the different inadequacies are there ki most of the backyard farming which is done on a small scale it is unorganized and they are having not they are also not following many of the standard operating procedure so they are many times they are having problems and these problems can cause problem to the yeah, organized in the uh, organized the poultry sector also and finance and insurance factors are weak for poultry in modification because many of the times banks and financial institutes they are not ready to offer loans to the poultry companies based on different criteria so this is also one of the major problem here but we can convert this backyard farming into commercial poultry farm and slowly this is happening in our country and most of the poultry is now transforming from backyard to uh, organized uh, commercial poultry farm and con this here we have to look out for the which are the factors which are really important necessary for the development of the poultry industry or organized poultry sector then i told you about the say, production the farmer is producing the chicken or table eggs and then they are sold in the market so they are this commercial broiler suppose chicken you can call chicken it is purchased by the traders then it goes to the retail shops small chicken shops in the city or in the village and then they can be supplied to the hotels qsrs and end consumers also so these are the different chains working here and uh, here also table eggs they are purchased by the traders then they go for the go to the retail shops chicken shops also they are keeping the eggs for sale or many of the times in villages you will find grocery shops with uh, say which are selling commercial egg table eggs for the 
consumer uh, supply and many of the time from these shops or from these traders the hotels they are procuring the table legs or chicken and supplying to the customer and there are also some of the e-commerce platforms like Nisius, Fresh to Home they are operating and they are supplying chickens and eggs as per the requirement of the consumer in the market but this factor or this particular section is very low it is not on a large scale so which are the major uh, inadequacies in this sector so indian market is a wet market where the bird is sold live and indian cons consumer mentality is that he wants that he the birds which he is going to purchase should be dressed in front of him so that he will have a satisfaction so that kind of wet market is more in india and there are very less or limited e-commerce or digital supply chains and many of the times the traditional values altering the demand and affect the production like just like we are in the month of sravan so it is affecting the consumption of the chicken as many of the people they keep fast during the entire month and they don't consume chicken and eggs so these kind of situations affect uh, consumption or demand demand for the poultry chicken and eggs and this also happens with the ganpati utsav and also it happens in the navratri also so these are the problems uh, we are facing currently or uh, all the time then we can create demand for processed or ready to eat chicken products so that this weight market can be reduced because many a times you heard that during this corona lockdown period these wet shops were closed and so that the availability of chicken and eggs was very less in the market and that time only these digitally or e-commerce platform they have supplied chicken and eggs to the consumer so this kind of need uh, demand we need to create in the market in the consumer so that the processed chicken consumption and eggs will increase and implementation of e-commerce for that purpose and we can provide good cold storage facilities processing plants frozen products and qsrs most so that these kind of processed chicken sale will increase in our country so this is the opportunity which are uh, in this particular sector so i was talking to you about the market so these are the current chicken and egg market situation in india 95 percent of the chicken is sold as a live or weight mark weight market we can call it and only four percent is sold in through e-commerce platform like lecius and fresh to home but this particularly after the covid this kind of platform is increasing and now it has almost been between seven to eight percent to the total chicken market and this is a processed or value addition products which is nearly at one percent but slowly this is also increasing but for this we need to have lot num lot many numbers of qsrs which are serving these kind of products and also we need more uh, more number of processing plants chicken processing plants which can supply these kind of uh, value addition poultry product to the consumer and in case of commercial table eggs 97 are sold as it is from the farm itself or from the shop itself and 2% they have been sold as packaged you might have heard about the uh, packaged eggs like power eggs or omega 3 fatty acid eggs or vitamin E rich eggs, selenium rich enriched eggs and all that so this kind of packing or packed eggs are sold especially in in the malls and uh, big uh, super stores so this is also increasing slowly but only this is increasing in the metro cities and big second grade to city uh, second grade cities this is increasing but definitely this is increasing and whenever this will increase to a large extent then definitely lot of opportunities for the peoples which are involved in supply chain will also come into play and less than one percent eggs are sold as a process there the peoples are selling the liquid eggs liquid white liquid yolk or liquid yellow or uh, egg powder they are selling but 
package that you can have just a drink like other cold drinks or uh, like just like a butter drink so this kind of but this is very very limited more than less than 1% is the contribution of this sector then these are the different qsrs which are operating in our country like wikis express pizza hut mcdonald dominos burger king papa jones kfc subway all these are uh, operating in india and many of the qsrs which operate which operates at the local level they are been managed by the local poultry farmer they have started their own qsrs and they are supplying uh, quality added poultry chicken and eggs to the consumers through their own qsr also so this also increasing this is the photograph of our uh, qsr um, many of the places in pune we are having this kind of restaurants there where you can eat and you can also take away take away is also available so these kind of restaurants we are maintaining there and these are some of other like subway taco bells McDonald's and KFC, they are operating and which are really helping to increase the share of the processed or value added chicken products in India. Then coming to another uh, supply chain in India, which, which we can call as a carcass and egg based wastage supply chain. So these are the products which, are, which comes as a waste from the poultry um, chicken processing plant, egg processing plant. So these are mainly skin. Many times skin is not uh, included in consumption. So skin, then intestines, they definitely are not consumed. Then legs of the bird, feathers, bones, then broken eggs. Many times during processing they are broken or during transportation they are broken. Or hatchery or processing plant waste, etc. These are collected. They go to the rendering plant. And from there, they we can manufacture the poultry fat or poultry meat again which is used as a raw material for the production of the feed and some of the which are fancy so they go into the production or uh, in they are used in uh, making some ornaments and gift articles are made with the help of these feeders so this is based on the carcass and eggs based waste supply chain this is Bedding material supply chain in, in case of commercial broilers, lot of bedding material is required as I told you earlier. So here the birds are not kept in the cages but they are kept on the ground in the shed and so they need some rice husk or wood savings, sawdust, then peanut hulls, groundnut kernels, you can say then straws and other dry. We need a dry but absorbent material which can absorb the moisture which is uh, there by the coming from the droppings of the birds so we need a good dry absorbent dry material this is this is also rice husk or wood savings or sawdust or groundnut kernel these are also the waste or byproduct when you are processing the rice or you are having some sawmill or something like that or you can having a groundnut uh, extraction plant then you can get this kind of uh, groundnut kernels and all that so these are the waste material from there so these are taken by some traders like they are purchased it in a big volume and then they purchase uh, supply to these particular farms small farmers which are in contract with the companies and then these are used at the farm and again after these broiler birds are kept for 40 45 days on this bedding material it is can this raw bedding material is converted into a good manure which is used by the agriculture farm for their um, crops like sugarcane or uh, sorghum maize soya any for any crop we can use that manure so this is the complete chain related to the bedding material supply What is the current situation in this case? The quality of bedding material is not, right now it is not fulfilling the requirements many a times in connection to the moisture level, moisture absorption capacity and microbial contamination. We don't want any microbial contamination coming from these kind of bedding material. And we, 
and we do not have a good alternative for these kind of bedding material rice husk is one of the best and very widely utilized bedding material in poultry so we are continuously we are working to improve the quality of this bedding material so that it can have a positive effect on the productivity and this will not cause any problem to the birds in relation to their infection or performance then coming to the vaccine medicine and feed supplement supplier chains in poultry there are many vaccinations are done up to marketing and these vaccines they are produced from the spf eggs these spf eggs means the eggs which are free from specific patho pathogens or you can call it as specific pathogen free eggs and these eggs are used for the production of vaccines uh, even human vaccines are produced with the use of this uh, spf eggs and then there are if you you want to install a vaccine plant or medicine plant you need to spf flock you need engineering to create to build the plant we can have production equipments and all the structure then you need to have a rnd lab which can go on uh, conducting the trials and different kind of experimentations on virus and bacteria then you need pharmacologically active ingredients also you need Mm, there for making of some medicines or disinfectants just like we might have uh, you are daily using the sanitizer alcohol based sanitizer so in that the basic raw material is ethylene alcohol which is used as a which is a active pharmacological ingredient so these are the mm, utilized for this production then government accreditation is there for vaccine production manufacturing lot of permissions and mm, certification is required and then we can have some vaccines and medicines which are used mostly these production of vaccines and medicines like antibiotics especially and disinfectants need government authorization and approvals from the food and drug regulatory authority and then these vaccine produced the vaccines medicines and disinfectants they are sold to the super distributors means the distributor which is operating on a state level they are supplied to the state level distrib super distributor then from that distributor it is sold to the distributor which is operating in a particular small area like district from him it goes to the retailer which is operating in again a very small area like tehsil place or a small Four five villages uh, area, and from there, from these retailers, these farmers are purchasing these vaccines, medicines, whatever they want, and they are used at at their farm for the betterment of the poultry production. And uh, sometimes these companies, which are producing the vaccines, medicines, and uh, disinfectant, they directly supply it to the corporate customers. and then they these corporate customers they are supplying it to the their contract farms and they are utilized in the their farm so this is a very complicated uh, supply chain but this is well organized right now here there is no lacunas are there many of most of the times it is operating as per the standard and uh, this is most uh, integrated and organized the sector or supply chain of this uh, poultry industry and these are the some of the photographs of the poultry vaccine plants which are producing the vaccines this is about the pharmaceuticals which are produced and these are the this is for producing of the disinfectants sanitizers and this is particularly for the production of vitamins minerals everything every category has a different kind of has a different facility requirement is there so that accordingly we have developed such kind of facilities for production of different kind of products and this is what i was talking about the specific free pathogen eggs here no one can enter without permission even whenever you want to go inside you need to take a bath you change the clothes you need to change the clothes you need to have spray and you need to have some quarantine for 3 4 days earlier and then only you can enter inside these farms otherwise you can't 
so these kind of precautions are taken as these spfx are used for the vaccine production for animals as well as for humans also. and what are the different opportunities in these sectors so medicine vaccine this i told you it is well organized and uh, development of good r and d facilities and shifting from inorganic to organic because you might have heard about lot more about the antibiotic free chicken and all that but actually it is happening and many more majority of the producers chicken producers they have reduced or in some producers they have stopped the usage of antibiotics in their poultry production so we are slowly marching towards the antibiotics free poultry production in coming future and uh, we do have also new improved vaccines for better control of the diseases in poultry like vector vaccines we are having recombinant vaccines we are having and immuno complex vaccines we are having so all kind of improved vaccines we are having in poultry and slowly we are going uh, marching towards the healthy poultry production by virtue of all these improved product um, vaccines then anti uh, antibiotic pre poultry production we have lot many we have developed lot many alternatives for antibiotics in the in the uh, in terms of uh, acidifiers free acidifiers and probiotics etc and uh, but this here e-commerce can be helpful as we are getting lot like uh, human pharma we are having one gram like uh, digital platforms or we are having many of the other platforms also their net made one gram that kind of platforms can work very well in this segment also but uh, they I, I, and i am quite quite uh, optimistic that this kind of e-commerce will definitely come in couple of years ahead in poultry vaccine medicine supply also then this is the last part which is equipment supply chain i i told you there are a lot of equipments are required like these small drinkers feeders for the birds to feed and uh, uh, to eat the feed and drink the water lot many equipments are required such kind of simple equipment these are the sim very simple equipments but they are required for the birds so there are the many equipment manufacturing companies they are supplying it directly to the customer that means the farmers or they are supplying it to some middleman which can act as a distributor and from them it is supplied to the end customer end user like uh, broiler farmers then there are many companies which are uh, manufacturing these kind of machineries which are required for feed production like feed mills grinders mixers and all that conveyor belts conveyor chains weighing platforms there then these are the particular industry which is uh, in the production of uh, incubators or hatching machineries which are used for uh, hatching of the chicken or eggs and uh, these are other raw machineries which are utilized for so very state of the art machineries are utilized for the production of vaccines then different uh, feed additives medicines they are utilizing for the production of uh, such kind of uh, machineries are utilized and they are supplied directly to the companies or customer or you can have many times middlemen are not operating in large custom machinery supply but here small equipment definitely middlemen they are acting as a distributor for supply but here this is 99% this is directly supplied from the producer to the end user so this is also a very important chain and here also some companies are there like, like we do have our sister concern which are supplying these machinery machineries or they can take up the turn key projects also for hatchery feed mill and even poultry farm also so these kind of equipment chain supply chain is also very important in poultry and uh, in this case new modern technology needs to be popularized which we are doing right now for better and comfortable poultry production and uh, only thing is that okay, we need to focus on multiplying chicken egg processing and rendering plants which are in less number currently 
so slowly these are coming up but uh, this is the need of the time to increase the number of more number of chicken and egg processing plants so that most of the chicken which is sold now as a live or wet can be sold through these channels as a processed or value added uh, chicken right and uh, in all that this is the most important factor or key you can say logistics everywhere logistics are involved suppose you are agriculture producing farmer you you are supplying me we need the logistics we need the trucks then if suppose some active pharmacological apis are coming from other countries then you need logistics international cargoes or ships they are for global suppliers and you might have heard that during this lockdown period this international trade was affected because of problems in the logistics and till today also we are having some problems related to logistics uh, the supply problems of uh, these uh, materials from outside india then we need to have we need, we do have refrigeration